Okay, um, today we're looking at what's called factorising by completing the square. Before we get on to that, there's a couple of things that are perfect squares, and if I was to expand those, I'm doing it in my head, but there'll be some stuff that goes on in between there, and this one we'd end up with that. And for x minus 2 squared, uh, x minus 3 squared I should say, we would end up with, with that there. So when we look at the numbers, so the one in front of the x, and we look at the number in the back of the bracket, what do you notice about these numbers? They're doubled. They're doubled. Right. If you look at the number on the end and the number in the bracket, what do you notice? It's squared. It's it squared. All right. So this factorising by completing the square, what we're going to do is we're going to make a perfect square. So if I have something like, um, say, x squared plus 10x, if I wanted to make that into a perfect square, what would I need on the end? So in other words, let me say, if I was to make that a perfect square, what would be in that bracket? We'd have to have x five, five plus five. So what would I need on the end? Twenty-five. I would need plus twenty-five on the end. All right. So the plus twenty-five now makes that. Perfect square. All right, so we're going to use that idea. So we're going to start with something here and we're going to turn it into a perfect square, and there may or may not be something else out here. And so we'll have a look at what we do with that. All right, so let's have a look at some examples. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a perfect square. From the first two terms. Right, so the x squared plus 8x, we're going to create a perfect square with that. Alright, so the number, in this case it's a plus, that goes in here, we look at that and what do we do? Right. So we divide it by 2. 
And so that's then plus four. Now, for this to be a perfect square, we need to have a number on the end there. So to get that number on the air, we look at this four and what do we do with it? Square it. Yep. Heard someone say that. So then that would be plus 16. Alright, so I'm just going to put some brackets around that to highlight. Now we had, in our sum, we had this plus three. So I'd better put that there. Now I've changed this and I've come down to here to create my perfect square. And then, because I've now got this 16 that was here that was not there before. So to keep it balanced, I need to minus it. So I need to minus 16 over here. And so, when I do plus three minus 16, it would be minus 13. Right, I'll just rewrite that. So this to this is the completing the square part. So I now have something that's a perfect square. And then minus some number. Now to the factorised part. Two terms and then a minus in between. Two terms and a minus in between, what's that look like? Difference of perfect squares. Alright, so the second bit is we now factorise using difference of perfect squares. Alright, so factorise by completing the square. So completing the square bit is turning it from that into that, and now the factorising bit. So, plus in one bracket, minus in the other. X plus four is being squared, so X plus four in the front of each bracket. And the back of each bracket is 13, we can't square root that and get a whole number, so how do we write it? Just the square root of 13. And that is the final answer. And it's now factorised by completing the square. So completing the square turns x squared plus 8x plus 3 into x plus 4 all squared take 13. And the factorising bit is that to there. All right, let's do another example. Now in your textbook, they set it out differently to this. Um, if you like what's in the textbook, then use that. A lot of people don't like it because there's lots of brackets and it gets very confusing. All right, can I rub that out? Oh, yeah. So I'm going to leave these two things here. Factorise x squared minus 2x plus 8. So create a perfect square from the first two terms. So x squared minus 2x. Put the plus 8 out there. So I'm going to create a perfect square here. To find the number that's going to go in that perfect square, I look at the coefficient of the x and I Halve it, divide by two, yep, whatever you like, whichever way you like. So minus one. There would be a number that goes up here. So 
So to find that number, what do we do? Square. Square. So minus 1 times minus 1. Plus, plus 1. And... So if I've added 1 there, I'm minus 1 there. Plus 8. Minus 1 is... Plus seven. Now, the next bit that we would do, I'll just write that, would be factorise using dots. Now, what do you notice about this one? There's no minus. There's no minus. There's a plus there. Hmm? So maybe plus and minus. You just don't do it at all, don't you? You don't do it at all. So here, we can't factorise. Can't factorise because we have a plus here. Alright, so it's only if we've got a minus there that we can factorise. So in this one, we can't do it. Alright, let's have a look at another example. So this time we've got x squared minus 8x minus 5. Create a perfect square from those first two terms. So I'll put them together. Next line down is where our perfect square will be. And the number that's going to go in that is minus 4 and we get that because we look at this one and we divide by 2. Then for this here to be a perfect square what do I need here? 16 and I get that because I look at that minus 4 and I Square it. And because I've put an extra 16 in there that wasn't there before, I need to take 16 out over there. So negative 5 takes 16 is negative 21. Alright. Factorise using dots. In the front of each bracket, what's going to go there? X minus 4. X minus 4. In the back of each bracket? Square root 21. Square root 21. And that is factorising by completing the square. Right, do I need to do another example? People want to do practice. No, we get it. We get it. All right. Exercise five e then.